Hello folks, this is Elfie, manufacturing another draft for entertainment. As always, we're in the Swiss queues, this time it's M12. And we're kind of bugged out. Hmm. I hope that fixes itself. I hope the low quality of the packs also fixes itself, because I'm not excited by this. Um, wow. I think the choice might be between Diabolic Tutor and Trollhide because all the rest of this is kind of ugly. Oh, and everyone seems to be falling offline. Maybe I'm not the only one who's experiencing some weirdness here. Oh, well, that seemed to have fixed it. Go team! Alright, so I think I'm going to take the Trollhide here. Arbalist Elite might be better, but I've never really found myself successfully playing with it, so I'm a little tentative to take it here. <coughs> and we get past an acidic slime, which is very nice. Um, hmm, some very good black here, too. The Onyx Mage is super powerful. I think people are still undervaluing it a little bit. I've played so many decks where I've had a bunch of terrible creatures, but one or two Onyx Mages, and it's just fine because suddenly the quality of your creatures doesn't really matter as long as they have power. Um, having said that, I am going to take the Acidic Slime here. Of course, we can't be confident that those any of those cards actually are signals just because of the fact that the rare was missing from the pack that came through to us. Um, and again, that's true, although this time the Acidic Slime is passed through two people, so I'm just going to take it again. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, because we're going to be running Acidic Slime, we're going to be... Holy cow. We're going to be looking for acceleration if possible, because the turn 4 Slime onto your land can be a super, super powerful play. Um, hmm, now, this is a really tricky choice. Cudgel Troll is obviously the best card for green, but I'm sorely tempted to take the Pacifism here, just because it is a better card overall. And because of the quality of green cards here, we may get something back, even though we're going to pass them. So I think that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, so I've been getting some good, really good feedback about the kitten draft. I really appreciate that, guys. Um, and I'm sure both Rainbow and Dash are also enthused to be so fondly loved by the internet. Um, for those of you who maybe missed our most recent draft, it was a Scars Block draft, and um, FGH had some interesting things to say about uh, buying cards from Card Camel's eBay store, so if you haven't watched that, I would encourage you to go have a peek at it, um, or possibly just read the comments. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if someone went ahead and just spoiled it, the information through the comments, but that's cool too. Just chill here, I'm waiting for a pack. Taking it easy. Hmm. It's a little bit disappointing. The sundial isn't worth anything, so I'm not going to consider rare drafting it. So here, I think the choice is between... Actually, my initial instinct was that the choice was between Plummet and Manolith. However, we've already got two pretty good enchantments, and the Trollhide in particular is the kind of enchantment that can end up in the graveyard. So I think I'm going to take the Oromancer here. Um, it's possibly a mistake not grabbing the Manolith while we have the chance, but I like the prospect of being able to build around the Oromancer a little bit. Alright, and here we have actually a handful of good cards again. Uh, the Veteran's probably better than the Wolf. Um, the question is just whether I want to grab the rampant growth for the acceleration that I was talking about earlier, and I don't think at this point in time that's the correct choice, so I'm going to take the veteran here. Because uh, it feels like we're going to have, well, based on what we've drafted so far, aggro is not um, out of the question. Certainly green does a good job of complementing that. And those acidic slimes just provide such powerful disruption. That even if we don't end up with a lot of proper removal, we can usually finish the game off. Uh, 
And here's a pack that is unfortunately quite reminiscent of the pack we opened, in that there's not very much going on. Siege Mastodon is, I guess, the best card in the pack, but the problem you run into is that green has a million fives that are better than the Mastodon, so we don't actually care about it. Uh, but I just don't want any of these cards, really. I guess that's a hate draft. <laughs> Awkward. Alright, um, I guess that's a sign that we're at least in one of the right colors. The Vanguard is also not a bad card, so the fact that it's here is encouraging also. But the web is extraordinarily powerful, and it also works well with the Oromancer. Alright, so the skeleton came back around, and that's... If nothing else, it's the sort of card that could give us a headache. Oh, okay. Um, so maybe we're going to be black. Uh, if we get a little bit of fixing, we can go green-black, splashing the pacifism. Um, I'm not actually the biggest fan of Mind Rod in this format, uh, just because it's so hard to hit it at the right time, so I'm actually going to hedge my bats and take a Griffin Rider because if the Griffin Rider pans out, then we're obviously in a really great place, and if not, we aren't missing out on nice 14th pick rare. We aren't missing out on too, too much. Right, so that was kind of a weird pack. We didn't end up with quite as many... Well, actually, no. We have a couple of very powerful cards, but we don't have the middle ground that I like to have in, in a deck. Um, here again, a pretty weak pack. The choice is basically between the boots and the assault griffin. And I'm a pretty serious fan of the boots, but but a griffin is a griffin. And it fits a spot on our curve that green can sometimes have trouble filling, and also it obviously works well with the griffin rider. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so here we have another arachnus web. Um, the only alternative would be taking the foil Sengir and sort of pushing back towards black, but I'm not comfortable doing that at this point in time when there's such a good card that we're definitely going to play available. Alright. This is definitely the frowns. Alright, so here I think we're just going to make a hate draft that's lined up to absolutely destroy our deck because there's so little else going on that interests us. Not completely out of the question would be a hev heavy green with splashing both black and white. Um, however, we'd want to get some fixing for that, and also it makes the Onyx Mage, Onyx Mage much less powerful when you can't reliably activate him two or three times a turn. What in the fuck? Alright, um... Mind Control is obviously a more powerful card, but I don't want to move in on blue here. Um, I feel like maybe I've been too hesitant to take up the blue sing signals, although obviously I couldn't have predicted getting a fourth pick mind control here. Um, there are a handful of powerful green cards, so hopefully one of those will come back around also. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, um, another very good array of white cards this time. Uh, I think the choice is between Alabaster Mage and Griffin Sentinel. The Alabaster Mage is really powerful, but the Griffin Sentinel provides damage that can get through somewhat reliably. Um, combos well with our Griffin Rider, and if we get to push the Oromancer theme with an another power, another Voltron-esque enchantment or two, the Griffin Sentinel is obviously good for that because it has Vigilance also. Alright, here's an example of one of the great 5 drops that Green has, but we're just going to take possibly the best white common. Um, whatevs, I guess. Alright, so I feel like we're we're fairly solidly into white-green. Um, 
The choice here, I think, is between the Bears and the Veteran. Um, it's actually a bit closer than you'd think, even though the Veteran is more powerful. We've already got a lot of green, or a lot of uh, three drops, and our one, our two slot is kind of thinly populated. Um, having said that, Bears are the kind of card you'll see late, whereas Veteran isn't, so I think ultimately I'm going to have to go with the Veteran. Uh, what the fuck? Okay, um, so at least we're in the correct colors most correct colors ever. Um, uh, going to push on with the Oromancer theme by grabbing the Divine Favor here. Gorger is a good card, but it's it's not irreplaceable in the sort of deck that we're working on drafting. Um, another excellent 3-drop we can grab. Um, we'll grab the second Divine Favor here. I'm probably not going to play two, especially when we have better enchantments. Um, that are coming around. Alright, so we have 20 playables, 20 very good playables here. Uh, our, we don't have a lot of ways to win yet, um, and being sort of the Voltron deck can be a little bit poor, um, but we'll take Ormancers a little bit higher for their card um, advantage off aspects, and hopefully get one or two good cards that can help us actually finish off the game in addition to um, building a mega creature. Wow, this is this is not a bad deck so far. <whistles> All right, here we have kind of a tricky pick actually. Um, I think the Stormfront Pegasus is stronger than the Elvish Archdruid. Actually, no. The Stormform Pegasus is just the correct bit here. If we weren't already so heavy on three drops, and or if we had a land or else or two, um, it's possible the Archdruid would move up ahead of it. But here we're just just going to take the the creature that's going to get through for damage. <coughs> Excuse me. Our Griffin Rider is a little touch and go at present, just because of the relatively low number of Griffins that we have available. Um, now here's actually a very tricky pick. Arachnus Web is better than the Assault Griffin. However, at this point in time, we already have three ways, four ways, to sort of Arachnus Web something, and we're a little looser on creatures that can finish the game the way the Assault Griffin can. So even though the Web is stronger, we're going to take the Griffin here. Huh, so that's a lot of ridiculous black. But without any hmm it's just a doom blade though no okay you know what that's that's not the correct pick here even though I would really like it um jade mage is the kind of card that can help us finish the game the way I was describing it obviously just gets crazy once you can activate it two or three times a turn um so we're going to take it here and just hope to have an Arachnus Web in hand when we come up against the Cemetery Reaper guy. Uh, what in the f okay. A number of very good cards, or very interesting cards here for us. Um, we could take yet another Assault Griffin, which begins putting our Griffin Rider in actually like playable territory. Alternatively, we could take the Benelish Veteran, which I think would be a better play if we were... Um, Again, not so heavy on three drops already. Um, Celestial Purge or Manolith might come back around. It would be great if the Rampant Growth came around, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that. So I think we just want another Assault Griffin here. Um, hopefully I'm correctly building the deck as opposed to building, um, or instead of taking good cards. Um, so here we get the Benelish Veteran we weren't sure about having previously. We may end up running it over the Oromancer. We may not. It's unclear at this stage. Okay. And here we have a very interesting pick between an Elite Vanguard and another Oromancer. Um, we're going to cut one of these. Yeah, I think Oromancer might be the pick here. Um, it's going to be tricky figuring out what we're going to do with our three slot. But the way our deck is set up, we just have such nice card advantage um, that coming from Ormancers that I'm not too concerned about it. 
so this has been an interesting draft. This, hmm, I've had a, an experience, and I think I mentioned this on a previous recording, uh, where the last half dozen or so drafts that I've done, I've ended up with ridiculously powerful seeming decks, but everyone else's deck has also been extraordinarily good. So I'm not sure whether someone's just spiked the packs on Moto or what. But um, we're probably not going to run three Ormancers, whereas we may want the Griffin Sentinel to help out our Griffin Rider. Um, here I think the choice is between the Gorger and Sideboard card and Fog. We're probably not actually going to run the Gorger because again we have we've really sort of sorted out the win condition plan, especially now that we've got the Oromancer package going on. So we're just going to grab just going to grab what we can just drafting for... oh okay so everything came back out of this pack. Um, yeah, the more I think about it the more I suspect we might not actually pick up the Oromancer package, because we just have so many great 3-drops, so we'll probably cut the Divine Favors, um, even if Trollhide ends up being a 2-for-1 against us. Um, I'm comfortable with that, because at this stage, I mean, we have 10 more playables, or approximately 10 more playables than we really need. So, uh, yeah, so I'll build the deck and then talk about it if it seems interesting afterwards. Alright, so here's a 24-card deck. Um, you'll notice there's a veteran in the sideboard in lieu of a sacred wolf. Even though the veteran is a slightly better card, the sacred wolf obviously can do ridiculous things in combination with the troll hide. So that's why I've opted for that um, that decision. And we have to make one more cut, and it's really difficult. It's a really difficult choice to be trying to make here. I think Dave off is actually very good so I don't want to cut it although I'm concerned that if I cut a creature I'm going to undermine the sort of aggro focus of our deck um, Griffin Rider is maybe an okay choice we've got five ways to activate him which is pretty good but it's not the best and actually yeah I just I, I can't Um, you know what, I'm, I think I'm actually just going to run an FGH special here, which is to say I'll run 17 lands in addition to this and just have 41 cards in the deck. It's obviously loose in so far as it makes you 1 over 41 times less likely to draw like the card you need when you need it. Um, or however you break down that math. Um, I'm not going to focus too close on it. But I feel like it's what we're, it's the easiest decision to make here because I don't want to cut anything from this. And I think having access to stave off is important, but I think the Griffin Rider can just be pretty powerful in this deck. Um, pulling up our stats, our mana curve is a little bit low too. Um, so having a slightly higher ratio of spells to lands but not the 16 land option is is an excuse I will gesture towards in order to justify my decision. So now we just need to add lands and get a suggestion there. Yeah, we have almost no double cost to speak of. The acidic slime's at the very end of the curve, and I think with seven forests we'll... Oh, actually, um, eight forests, because of course we're running 17 lands, so we want one over the 40 that it's offering us. Um, and that's a very, very stable, sexy looking mana base. So I'm extraordinarily happy with that. Alright, so I've got to duck out and check on my laundry, but hopefully you guys will join me for round one.